It is what's trending today on CRN Digital Talk Radio. I'm Jennifer Horn. Usually in studio with me is my buddy, my pal, Brian Whitman. He is out a little under the weather today. But instead, I almost feel like, I mean, I'm not going to tell Brian I think I've traded up. But, I mean, I've got, I actually went to New York City to get someone to replace Brian Whitman from AM 970, The Answer, and the <clears throat> host, excuse me, I'm all choked up about this, of The Morano Show. It's Frank Morano, everybody. How are you today, Frank? I'm doing great, Jennifer. Thanks for asking me to fill in for Brian. Uh, I hope uh, I hope Brian gets paid more than I do for this show, because I, I wasn't <laughs> even offered a free lunch or something, but it's a... a I will take you to... to lunch. How's that? Oh, <laughs> all right. Now, we are, now you're talking. It's always a, really dogs. a thrill to talk with you and... Uh, uh, beyond what's trending, I am a regular listener to uh, to this program, and uh, really, this is about as close as I come to actually knowing what's going on in the trending world of social media. Because I will be the first to admit that I am normally, if not for you, I would be totally out of touch. But normally, I'm mostly out of touch. Oh, so thank so, you. So you tell me, I'm the one that keeps you in tune with all the youngins out there. Right? Solely, really? Yes. Oh, yes well, and absolutely. I thought you were kind of a hip and happening guy around town. No, well, that's the thing about me. People think I'm hip, yeah. but uh, I'm not. I, I've actually actually made it hip to be unhip. It's like, like that kind of, <laughs> almost to be Ben square. Stein-esque. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, if you haven't heard this show before, if you're just joining us for the first time, what's trending today is a wrap-up of everything that was trending on social media, in the news, in the newspaper, on TV, wherever you may look. We take the best of the best, the hottest stories of the week, we recap them so that, you know, you're all ready to go to your parties this weekend, you can go to the bar, you can hang out, whatever you're going to do, you'll be prepped with all the information you need about what's been going on. So, Frank, thanks for joining me. This will be fun. Oh, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for asking me. And just so I'm clear uh, yes. on what we're discussing, who is actually the arbiter of determining what's trending? Because I see Facebook has their own list of trending topics and then Twitter has their version of trending topics. Is it just you saying that something's trending? I am but... the boss of the trending universe. <laughs> right, but, but where do you get these trending topics from? I get them from Facebook. I get them uh-huh. from Twitter. I also use sources. And, and from time to time, since you're a regular listener of the show, you've probably heard it. Some of the the folks from Yahoo and Google will also stop by and let us know about what's been most searched during the week, so we get those topics. And then, of course, whatever's been hot on the in the news. So that's where all the topics come from. We sort of push them all together and and put them into a nice little hour long package. Well, I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, so let's start with the hard news, as we like to call it here in the biz, Frank. Hillary Clinton. Big this week. I mean, all over the news media. Now, last week, the story broke that she was using uh, a personal email address, ClintonEmail.com. She also had her own personal server, and uh, she wasn't quite turning over every single email. She did a press conference this week in front of the United Nations, at, and uh, during that press conference, she said, look, I turned over everything except for my emails about Chelsea's wedding, my mother's death. My yoga poses. And uh, I gave you everything that you're going to need. I've turned it all over. You cannot have access to my personal server because that's something that my husband and I use, personal communications there. And uh, I want to get your your thoughts on how this all played out in the media because it has been probably the biggest story of the week. Would you agree? Oh, without a doubt. I I mean, this is really unbelievable on several different levels. I I find it unbelievable that Secretary of State Clinton put herself in uh, in this position. I find it unbelievable that the president claimed that he had no idea until there were news reports that this was the case. I I find the whole thing incredible, and uh, whether it's criminal or not, I think it it speaks volumes about exactly how she feels about public disclosure. A lot lot of judgment. All right, when we come back, we are going to talk about Hillary Gate, as we're calling it here, also the Secret Service in the news, and a lot more this hour. It's What's Trending Today, Jennifer Horn and Frank Moreno on CRM Digital Talk Radio. Hi, here's your delivery from staples.com. Thanks, staples guy. Ugh, do you have stuff to clean this disaster of a break room? Sure, Staples has wipes, paper towels, sprays, sponges, all at a low price. How about these floors? Disinfecting cleaners, mops, bucket with side press ringers, and yellow wet floor signs. Anyone know how long it takes to reheat cod? We also have air fresheners. I'll take a case of those. Make on budget happen, make cleaning up happen. Staples, make more happen. Now at Staples, get a Lysol Wipes 3-pack for just four ninety nine. dollars Offer valid on SKU 950 in-store and online and it's 314 while supplies last. See storestables.com for details. Spring flooring season is here at Lumber Liquidators. Get hardwood flooring looks on sale. This week, get 40% off hot gray styles with Delaware Bay Driftwood Laminate. Don't pay two forty nine dollars at other stores. We've got it for a dollar less. Or get the look of distressed hardwood with Mill River Walnut. It's also 40% off. Plus, D. 
deals on 400 styles of hardwood, bamboo, and more from 49 cents. And 18 months special financing. The look and style of hardwood is on sale now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. It is what's trending today on CRN Digital Talk Radio. I'm Jennifer Horn. In for Brian Whitman this week, Frank Morano. On loan to us, he is, he's Staten Island's favorite son, by the way, on loan to us from New York City and uh, giving us the East Coast perspective about what's trending this week. And Frank, before the break, we were talking about Hillary Clinton and you brought up a really good point in, uh, in this day and age. Trying to get away with anything like Hillary Clinton did with her private email address and with that server that she kept at her family home in Chappaqua. Does this show you, uh, give you a little peek into the judgment skills as Hillary, of Hillary Clinton as a politician? Uh, do you think this clouds her in any way or do you think she is, as the media says, too big to fail as a well, candidate? Well, yeah, I read that article in the New York Times where the Democrats say they view her as too big to fail. Right. I think I think that, uh, first of all, to the latter part of your question, I think that's part of the problem when any political party uh, puts all its eggs in one candidate's basket. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, a political movement, a political party, in my view, uh, whatever its goals, should be bigger than any one, uh, any one person. Now, in terms of... Um, um, this is really remarkable to me. I, I think if you buy what Hillary Clinton is saying, I mean, that she had two – and this is a question that I've been genuinely seeking an answer uh, from people about – who are much more knowledgeable about the subject than me. Oh, OK. Go what ahead. She, what she said <laughs> is that she – chose to you she did this because of convenience she wanted right. to carry one device instead of two v- devices now i would buy that i i carry just my personal uh, mobile phone out of convenience but and even though work gives me one but you know what happens is somehow you're able to get your work email on your personal device right. so the thing that hasn't been explained to me is why couldn't hillary clinton simply have one device and, and two, two accounts. email accounts. Okay, and this is the exact question I had, Frank, because I have an iPhone. Look, I've never had a BlackBerry, so I'm not going to comment. I know that's her big device in question. But I know on my iPhone, I have three email accounts going at once. I have my work email. I have my other work email that's sort of like a, you know, sort of a, a personal slash work email. And then I have my personal email. I have them all three going simultaneously on my iPhone. Now, it, even if she did only have access to one account on that device. Sean Hannity this week, I don't know if you had a chance to see the show, but had video footage of her on a late night show talking about how she, they asked her kind of a this or that scenario, you know, boxers or briefs, red or blue. And they said, iPhone or droid. And she said, oh, iPhone. But she said, you know, I have to tell you, I have an iPhone. I have a Blackberry. I have an iPhone mini or an iPad mini and an iPad. So she admitted to having four devices, in the context of a late night show, but yeah, no, I mean clearly that's why. I mean her explanation is dishonest, and um, I, I think I think the whole thing just stinks to high heaven. Now I, I don't think you're going to see her, whether she broke the law or not. I don't think you're going to see her prosecuted for perjury or for violations of the Federal Records Act or anything else. Additionally, the people that have decided at this point in life, even after all the Clinton scandals, even after her tenure as Secretary of State, which I think she exercised questionable judgment on almost every foreign mm-hmm. policy. Uh, confrontation she was confronted with is um, if if they st- if they're still Hillary Clinton supporters at this point I don't see this changing their mind by the same token if you're like me and you could never see yourself voting for Hillary Clinton I don't see this changing your vote either so I think the political effect is negligible if anything I, I think maybe the one thing that it does do is ding the halo that uh, or if not remove the halo that so many even in the um, in the media. Mm-hmm. Have have placed on Hillary Clinton's head. Maybe she's now going to see herself getting the kind of media scrutiny that uh, other candidates have gotten over the years. And, you know, and rightly said, this isn't the Clinton's first rodeo with the scandals either. I mean, this is they know how to beat a scandal. So if this is I, I would agree with you, I don't think this impacts anything in any way. It gives us something to talk about. Now, the juicy thing here, and I know you are a fan of House of Cards and maybe this is a future script from House of Cards. But rumor is, ru- word on the street in Washington, D.C., set forth by, I think, Ed Klein, who's an author. He says that this is an inside job. He said that this is the Obama's attempt 
uh, along with Valerie Jarrett, to prevent a Clinton White House, the second Clinton White House, because they, number one, they don't like each other. There's a lot of bad blood, but that having someone like Hillary Clinton take over after Barack Obama will kind of negate all of the stuff that he's done in pushing the government so far to the left. So what do you say to the conspiracy theorists out there? Well, well, you know, I was actually talking with Ed Klein right before I jumped on the air with you uh, today, Mm -hmm. and and he said exactly that same thing again. I, I don't know. I mean, who knows? He's got all sorts of sources that I don't pretend to know about. I would suspect that um, the president w- could have had any number of more damaging ways to damage Hillary Clinton, knowing what he has known about her uh, since she was in his cabinet department. And who knows? Maybe we'll still see those. So wh- whether it was leaked or pursued by the president or not, I I, I don't know. But I, I don't think this makes the president look that good either. I mean, no. look at listen How to this clip. How did he not know he was well, a dumb yeah, right. guy? L- listen, to, <laughs> listen to Hello? this uh, interview that he did on CBS on Sunday. Mr. President, when did you first learn that Hillary Clinton used an email system outside the U.S. government for uh, official business while she was Secretary of State? Uh, At the same time. Uh, everybody else learned it through news reports. <laughs> now, let's say that, that that's before. true. Right. Let's everything. say that's true. Let, yeah. I, I mean, that's his standard response. Yeah. But let's Found assume that news. that's true. What does that say that he's so disconnected and so removed from his own secretary of state that he learned about it at the same time yeah. that I did? Now, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty really damn it. Or the alternative is that he's lying. Right. So uh, I'm not sure which is better. So I, I, that's the only thing that gives me pause on that Ed Klein theory is that I can't I, – I think this makes – the whole Obama administration looked terrible. Yeah, I would agree with you that no one in those years that she was Secretary of State said, hey, why am I writing to Clinton email? I mean, look, you and I write to each other all the time. I have a pretty good guess about what your email address is, and I bet you could kind of guess mine, even if it's just an automatic click when we're actually creating that document. I think you notice people's email addresses, and if she didn't have a .gov, why didn't somebody say something? That's a question. We'll continue to follow this story here on What's Trending Today. Now, also, kind of a scandal in Washington, a Bruin, the Secret Service, they have been, I mean, gosh, 99 problems and staying sober ain't one. I'm telling you, these Secret Service agents hard partying and in trouble again this week when news broke about a March 4th incident in which some Secret Service agents went out to a retirement party for one of their own, got a little schnocky, got in the car, big mistake, and drove back to the White House. Then they ran into some barricades. And then when the you think it can't get much worse, the person on duty pulls these guys out of the car, wants to give them a field sobriety test, wants to arrest them. When a supervisor comes along and says, uh, no, nope, you need to let them go home. So they put them in their cars and let them drive in that condition back to their homes. What do you think about this story? I, I, well, I, I mean, I, I don't understand what's going on with the Secret <laughs> it's Service. It's like they're hard partying people. I want to go I, hang uh, out with them. It's an MTV reality <laughs> show. I mean, clearly, when, when they're not pursuing prostitutes and letting people, yeah. uh, you know, into the White House gate very, very, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, up, up the stairs with weapons, they're drinking and driving, and then they're free to just go home. I, I, I don't know what to make of this, but I find it, as I'm sure most people do, just incredibly disconcerting. And, uh, you know, I don't know if there's a Correlation, you know, the Secret Service was always um, report, always reported to the Treasury Department until a few years ago when uh, the Department of Homeland Security came into being, and now they report to the Homeland Security. I don't know if we're just hearing about all these Secret Service scandals uh, now, or if they were always there. But if if these are new scandals, and all of a sudden the Secret Service is misbehaving, I think maybe we need to reevaluate the whole um, organizational structure of the Secret Service reporting to the Department of Homeland Security. Maybe that's why. President Obama has to hear everything on the news. He's probably busy taking like jujitsu classes to protect his own self because he knows oh, maybe, the, <laughs> maybe. he enough. knows the Secret Service has got you know something else going on. I, I don't know. As we continue, it is what's trending today on CRN Digital Talk Radio. The Apple Watch, oh, big trender this week. We've got all the details for you next. Jennifer Horn, Frank Morano on CRN Digital Talk Radio. Let me take just a moment or two, if I may, and talk about a great place to eat. That's right. For you folks anywhere in the eastern San Fernando Valley, drop in to Bob's Big Boys. That's right. In Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. Now, everybody remembers the name Bob's. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. And little old Bob carrying the hamburger in his checkered overalls is the same Bob that you remember from back through the years. And, of course, if you want to go in for a great lunch, remember their classic burger, the original double-deck hamburger combination. 
delicious 100% pure ground beef in two patties with American cheese, lettuce, and our famous big boy special sauce. The name is Bob, and I think when you go in, you'll say, by golly, I'm sure glad that I found this restaurant because it's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got all kinds of things, and all you have to do is remember. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. It's a great place to eat. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't become paralyzed by fear. Take action now. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help. Our team of experienced tax attorneys can get you protected. Stop collections and negotiate a permanent settlement with the IRS and state, potentially saving you thousands of dollars. At U.S. Tax Shield, our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. No games and no tricky upsells. That's why we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Put an end to your torment. Get protected. Get the shield. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 800-211-8753. That's 800-211-8753. 800-211-8753. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a non profit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free 3-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. That's what's trending today on CRN Digital Talk Radio. I'm Jennifer Horn. Frank Morano joining me today. Brian Whitman out under the weather. Frank, one day you have got to come back when Brian's here and hang out. We'll have a, a nice little coffee clatch. Like the old yeah. ladies say oh, on the street. Brian, Brian is an old friend of mine. I know. Uh, from, from Staten Island. Uh, we go back many, many years. Uh, you know, uh, but uh, I'd still, I think, rather be here with you, Jennifer. Well, hello. <laughs> 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 I appreciate you being here. And you can always follow Frank, by the way. Very interesting guy. You always want to get his opinion on things. Twitter.com at, is it Frank Moreno or just Moreno? Frank Moreno, M-O-R-A-N-O. All right. You'll be amazed at what you read in 140 characters. Yeah, and plus amazed. we can follow your podcast because you do a great weekend show. And it, really, you have the best range of topics. And this is no joke. Frank can talk about politics. He talks about wrestling, which I'm a big fan of. He talks about the stuff going on with the mob. He talks about sports. He talks about entertainment. You you do everything on your program. So actually, your show is a great companion show to this show, this program. Oh, well, you know, I, I do think we're sister shows in many respects. You're very kind to mention that this Sunday, for instance, uh, I'm going to be talking with former world heavyweight champion, boxing world heavyweight champion, not wrestling, Larry Holmes, who I'm mm-hmm. very much looking forward to That's chatting fun. with. And former Congressman uh, Tom Chancray who uh, not surprisingly has uh, uh, a thing or two to say about what's happening in Washington right now. Well, good. We're going to tune in for that. And you can listen on TuneIn Radio. You can go to am970theanswer.com. Or, again, follow Frank on Twitter. And uh, you can catch all the podcasts there because he tweets out those links. So check it out. Now, the Apple Watch in the news. This was big, big Big news this week. The Apple Watch uh, has been much anticipated by many techies, many Apple snobs, as I like to call them. And so the big press conference occurred in uh, in which we found out all the details that everybody has been hungry for, like when the watch is going to be released, which is Friday, April 24th. We also found out that this thing, it is not going to be cheap. It ranges in price from 350 bucks, Frank, all the way up to the model that I'm sure you're going to buy, seventeen grand. For an I, I Apple Watch. I don't understand, and I don't even have an iPhone, I don't have an iPod, but I don't understand, honestly, what makes this watch so great. Why does anybody really want it? 
You know, it's it's funny that this seems like the first time we've ever heard about this technology, because I remember about a year ago, actually, during the last Super Bowl, there was an awesome commercial from Samsung. Maybe you remember it, because I think you like classic TV like I do. Sure. And uh, it was a whole big spy commercial where they had uh, the guy with the big watch, and he was talking into it and listening to it, and it, they had all these clips. It was Get from, Smart, it right? Was a, Get it smart. was a play yeah. on Get Smart, and it was all these clips back into Get Smart, and they had other, like, Scooby-Doo. I mean, they had a bunch of classic TV. TV clips advertising this watch. And I remember thinking, that is great advertising. I would actually buy that watch, even though I don't even wear a watch anymore. I haven't since I was a kid. I liked that watch because it made me feel like I could be spy-like and stealthy when I'm walking the streets. But but what can you do with it? It's a phone. It's well, a, You can watch videos. You can go on so Twitter. Now, yeah, and Apple comes out. You can go on Twitter. It is a phone. You can either accept phone calls or mute phone calls from the watch. What I just learned, though, is that it has to be a companion to another Apple product. So you have to have an iPhone to have the uh, the watch work. It also has a, a separate app store. So like there's a separate app store for the iPad and for the iPhone, there'll be one for the iWatch. So... Many vendors are making apps that will work specifically with the watch. You can check Facebook. You can check Twitter. Now, one of the weirdest oh, because that's things, the, one of the biggest problems I have is yes. not being able to check Facebook and Twitter on your wrist, from the existing right? devices. You know what? First of all, um, the thing I am not an Apple user. Not, no, I don't use any of the Apple products. You're not an Apple snob. Uh, well, yeah, well, that's the thing is I feel like every Apple user is, is an Apple snob. Uh-huh. Now, are, are you Droid or, or I mean, are you uh, iPhone? I am an you, iPhone person. Uh, and so, I own an iPad, but that is where it ends. Okay. I want right, to keep please, my PC. Please. I don't want That's my ridiculous. Apple, you uh, know. So I uh, I have a <laughs> and a PC. <laughs> and I can't stand Apple users because they're such it's not good enough for them to just tell you how great their Apple product is. They have to then begin convincing you right. as to why you Look, should get an Apple. I it's know. a cult. I mean, you, you I know, am with uh, you. Uh, you know, what do you have? You have a, a Droid or iPhone? Then look. Oh no, I have a Droid. Oh, oh, you, oh, it's you like the have to get an boys. iPhone. I know. Give me a break. It's like they're getting paid from. Uh, I know. From, from Apple. I'm to not try one and of those me. people. I do have an iPhone, but I'll tell you why I have it. I had a Droid first. So my last phone was a Droid, and it died a horrible death on me while I was traveling for work. I was in Denver. The thing just like exploded, and so I called my carrier Verizon and I said, look, what is the phone that has the least amount of pro like where do you get the least complaints? And he said, lately it's been the iPhone. That's why I chose to get the iPhone. And, you know, so that's where I ended up with it. But you're right. The Apple snobs, they get crazy. They tell you why you need to have their device. I can't understand why anybody would want a one of these phones or basically a computer on their wrist. I I think it's ridiculous. I like Dick Tracy as much as anybody. (laughs) But uh, I think it's silly. And I'm sure 50 years from now, when every person has one of these on their wrist, they'll play back uh, this broadcast as an example of, oh, do you believe how out of touch people are? (laughs) Just because I'll be out of touch 50 years from now doesn't mean I'm wrong. It's so Dumb. You know, Give me a break. You know how many kids are going to have tennis elbow, right? This is going to be the new disease. Forget carpal tunnel. We're all going to have tennis elbow from looking at our watches all day long. Up next, entertainment news. Ooh, and a little food news for you. It is what's trending today on CRN Digital Talk Radio. Hi, folks. This is Larry Minetti. And many of you out there suffer from skin problems. Well, I've been telling you for months how to solve that problem. It's called Herpanacin. It's the most unique and effective formula on the market. It cleans your skin from the inside out. It gets rid of all kinds of acne on your back, your neck, your face, so you can feel and you could look like a movie star. Herpanacin is a natural supplement. It was created by Dr. Wayne Diamond and his staff, and trust me, this really works. I've been on these supplements for over a year now and never had a problem. There is no reason in the world to wake up and be afraid to look in the mirror. You trust Larry. Just try it. Call 888-467-4200. 888-467-4200. Just two fingers and a watch. That's all you need to get your resting heart rate, or RHR. Set the timer for a minute, press your wrist until you feel a pulse, and count. What's the number of times your heart beats per minute? What's normal? It depends on your gender and age. For men age 50 to 64, the magic number is under 80. For women that age, under 77. If it's a high number, that can be a sign of poor muscular heart function. So says Dr. Tamara Horwich, writing in the newsletter Healthy Years. 
Studies show if a man's RHR is 81 to 90, it can double his chance of premature death. Women with a high RHR up their chances of a coronary. So how do you lower your resting heart rate? Aerobic exercise. Even one hour a week can make a difference. Also, low cholesterol. When high, it can restrict blood flow. Your heart beats faster. And the last tip, lower your stress level. That's Primetime Focus brought to you by AARP. I'm Aileen Ellis. You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet. Fresh asparagus. Hollandaise on the side. A filet. Medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare. Close your eyes and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. The sizzle. The sizzle of a Ruth's Chris steak. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef. Broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees. Some call it a sizzle. We call it an anthem. As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at ruthschris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. Things aren't the same as they were when Geico started saving people money over 75 years ago. We didn't have reality TV. Back then, it was just reality The most exciting thing that ever happened was when Jimmy got his head stuck in a gopher hole. And trust me, that's not a show anyone would binge watch. Yep, we didn't have much entertainment, but switching our car insurance to GEICO was pretty exciting. GEICO, saving people money on car insurance for over 75 years. Hey, this is Bodie Stroud, host of In the Garage on CRN Digital Talk Radio. Join us every Wednesday and Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll talk with all my friends from the automotive and custom car business about all the latest things going on in the industry today. That's In the Garage with me, Bodie Stroud, Wednesdays and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern, right here on CRN Digital Talk Radio. this show is what's trending today and we have all 80s bumper music <laughs> i'm gonna rename it what was trending 30 years ago <laughs> it's jennifer horn frank morano what's trending today on crn digital talk radio and uh frank lots of entertainment news going down now are you a fan of the daily show you know, I, I actually have never watched a full episode, but all the clips that people post online and everything, I find pretty funny very often. So uh, I would say I'm a pseudo fan. If it disappeared tomorrow, it would not affect Lucky my Charms, life. Lucky Charms, Frosted Flakes. Exactly. That's very funny. Uh, see what I did there? Oh, yeah. I get it. You I get, get it. it? You need me to explain yeah. it to you? Point so, it out? No, flash I wish, light? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, what you need, it, when you, if you're concerned with people not getting your jokes or people not laughing, which I imagine happens to you all pretty often. All the time. What you need is... <laughs> That's I do. Need. Actually, I have a rim shot in here somewhere. I got to find oh, it. I'll, well, I'll find it. If you're gonna t- if you're gonna make some real <laughs> jokes, you better dust it off. I will do that. All right. Well, here's the news of the Daily Show. You know, most young people <laughs> use this as their sole source for getting news. I mean, I don't know if that's a sad fact or maybe something we should celebrate. But in any case, truth is truth. Many twenty and thirty somethings use the Daily Show for their sole source of news. And so, Quinnipiac University did a national poll, and they asked, "Who do you want to see replace John Stewart?" Because of course, he's leaving. He's out. He's out this summer. And do you have any guesses as to who came in? first in this poll, Frank? Well, I, I actually read this. Oh, so, so you know. So you're I, cheating. No, yeah. So I I, uh, I would have assumed. But you know what? I think uh, this is somebody that uh, is a very, very versatile uh, host who's done uh, something very similar to The Daily Show. Mm-hmm. And I'm not surprised to see this person. Yeah, right. Tina Fey, 19%. You're referring to, of course, her stint on Saturday Night Live. She hosted The Weekend Update. And you know what? To be honest, and I love playing this game. When something opens up, I love to predict who's going to get the job. I didn't even think about Tina Fey to replace Jon Stewart. But I like it. I think it would work. I don't know if she would like it. I can't see her taking that job. But I think she would do a great 
job if she did it. Now, Dennis Miller, this is another big surprise, came in at number two in the poll. And another great choice that I hadn't thought of, Dennis Miller might be a smidge too old, but hey, he just recently quit his radio show. I mean, maybe he has time to do something like this. I think, um, I'm sure both of them would be fine. Although Dennis Miller, he gets caught up in making these esoteric references yes. that people don't get. I mean, how many jokes about the Battle of Hastings uh, are, are these 25, 24-year-olds going to get? But then, um, I also, you know, so I don't see Dennis Miller doing it, number one. I don't see him being offered to it, number two. What I think Comedy Central should do, I mean, far be it for me to suggest anything uh, to them, they've had such a successful franchise with The Daily Show, is look for somebody to do a totally different take on this. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think CBS was wise to go in a very different direction than David Letterman in their selection of Stephen Colbert as the new host of The Late Show. Uh, But if you look at The Daily Show when they went from Craig Kilborn to Jon Stewart, they weren't looking for another. Craig Kilborn. They looked for somebody who had their own unique style, wasn't necessarily a household name, and I think that would be a much better route for The Daily Show to go, rather than for them promoting one of their existing Daily Show correspondents, or trying to take somebody that's already a household name and get them to bring their own panache and cachet to The Daily Show. I I I think they should take the short-term audience hit in putting an unknown who's very talented, or a lesser known who's very talented, and um, have them build their own are you applying? Brand. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think Brian Whitman actually, honestly, would be a terrific host. He would be host a great host. But I, I don't know, honestly, uh, I love Brian, but if he's calling out sick on a Friday, uh, I mean, <laughs> does he have the work ethic to, to do this show with no, the rigorous the schedule ethic. that That's entails? not why he's calling out. It was oh, something much, much, some, it was one of those conditions you never question when you get it in a text. You're like, okay, you take care of that. You deal with that on oh, your my. own. Uh, oh, too much my. information here. But uh, the person that I'd like to see is Joel McHale. Because I think he's done it for a lot of years on the soup, but we're dealing obviously with more celebrity stuff. But I think he's smart enough to actually be able to do it with newsy political stuff. I don't know. I think he could be a good candidate. But I, I would tend to agree with you. If there is any doubt about who they should put in there, you're always wiser to start with someone new because everyone else will always be trying to live up to Jon Stewart. So. Right. I, I know. I, I don't know if you know uh, Lionel, Jennifer. I do. I do know Lionel. Lionel is uh, very funny and very irreverent and very smart, which Jon Stewart is. Uh, and I think he would be somebody like him who's not necessarily a household name nationally. He'd be uh, he'd be terrific. If people want to you know, know what I'm talking about, you can go to Lionel Media dot com and uh, they see his clips and everything and uh, I think he's a that really kind funny guy. of thing yeah. yeah somebody who's funny somebody that's smart and somebody that's not necessarily already a household name yeah I think you're absolutely right but who brings their own style to the show now also in the news speaking of style Bruce Jenner holy moly okay I feel like we have been played Frank because Bruce Jenner did this big song and ballet dance about how he was going to convert and he was going to have the surgery to become a woman that he wanted to he's been living alive for 60 plus years and he was going to become a woman and he was going to have a reality show follow him well word is this week and it's been trending all week long on Facebook that Bruce Jenner is pulling out or at the very least putting his docuseries on hold because he doesn't know if his kids are quite ready for this big change that will obviously impact their lives just as much as it's going to impact his life. Well, you know, I'm amazed that this many people care, uh, quite frankly, <laughs> about this whole Jenner Kardashian They love them. Uh, you know, I, 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 I consistently wonder how we live in a country that elected George W. Bush and Barack Obama t- uh, four times consecutively. And this is exactly why. Because we live in a world where so many people care what gender Bruce Jenner happens to be and what TV network is chronicling his transformation from one gender to to the next. So I, I have I wish Bruce Jenner the best, whatever gender he wants to pick, whatever network wants to carry it. God bless him. You're I, I, I calling just, him Bruce Jenner. Let's just uh, change his name. Do you want I, to? Uh, no, no. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I, I mean, I know the fashionable thing is to make fun of Bruce I'm Jenner. I'm not trying to. It just I, I make fun of the Kardashians and the Jenner as a whole. A uh, Jenner's as a whole because I think they ask for it. To be honest, if you want to know how sausage is really made on this program, Frank, the top story of the week was that Kim Kardashian dyed her hair blonde. But I'm oh sorry. My goodness. I am not going to report about that because it's just oh ridiculous. My... Who cares? <laughs> Obviously, you do. <laughs> I hope we. I hope when that was announced, you broke into whatever the normally scheduled CRN program. We broke was. into the Fred Dreyer show and said, "Breaking blonde. news: oh my she's gone goodness. blonde." I know. My 
Goodness. It's a big story. All right. Also at the knee. Yeah, you're are you you're blonde, aren't you? I am. Sometimes yes. Sometimes at least. Well, no, so. actually, you know, I was born blonde, and oh, when I started highlighting my hair, I was blonde. So mm-hmm. I consider myself to still be blonde, even though my roots are kind of dark. And you're I heard that uh, joke, by the way. Oh, no, I bet, I bet, <laughs> I bet that's the the case. Um, me so is it true, Jennifer? The uh, the blondes have more fun. Actually, what we're going to get to that. There is a study. Great that you brought that up because blondes were trending this week, and. Kathy Griffin, by the way, out of Fashion Police. Can you believe it? Nine, seven episodes. The lady's out. So now this show is done. This I, show I cannot exist without Joan Rivers. They need her to insult people in a nice way. I can't believe that I've just spent four and a half <laughs> minutes talking about Bruce Jenner, the Kardashians, and uh, Kathy Griffin and the Fashion Police. Oh, this you is, know this you is love wild. it. Oh, you yeah. love it. Let's go get our nails done. You want to? I want to hear more about <laughs> how being blonde has been fun for you. Uh, oh, I will tell you next because there is a big study about blondes. It is what's trending today on CRN Digital Talk Radio. Private mortgage insurance, or PMI, can cost you thousands. But with the PMI Advantage from Quicken Loans, you may never have to pay those expensive monthly mortgage insurance premiums again. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, president of Quicken Loans, and I'm excited to tell you that the Quicken Loans PMI Advantage is our lender-paid mortgage insurance program. You see, we pay the PMI so you don't have to. Make the smart call and talk to one of our home loan experts today at 800-QUICKEN. You'll learn how the Quicken Loans PMI Advantage can give you more options, more flexibility, and may save you thousands when you refinance. And for five years in a row now, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction. And this year, for the first time, they've also ranked us highest in mortgage servicing. To learn more, call us at 800-QUICKEN. That's 800-QUICKEN, or visit us at quickenloans.com. Visit jdpower.com for award information. Important terms and conditions apply. Call us for cost information. Equal housing lender. License law 50 states and home loss number 3030. What's the secret to great business trips? Choice Hotels, where you'll find everything a business traveler needs, like a generous rewards program. And right now, choose Choice twice for two separate trips and get a night at no price. Stay for business at Choice Hotels and book now at choicehotels.com. Great endings begin here. Free night based on an 8,000-point Choice Privileges Reward Night at over 1,500 hotels. Valid 219.15 through 422.15. Requires registration in two separate qualifying states. Other terms and conditions apply. Details at choicehotels.com. Spring flooring season continues at Lumber Liquidators. Get hardwood flooring looks on sale, like the must-have look of distressed hardwood. Don't pay $4.89 at other stores this week. Save almost 40% on pre-finished Savannah oak hardwood. Or get the look of Brazilian cherry for less than half of what you'll pay at other stores. This week, Santo Andre Lab is just 99 cents. Plus, deals on 400 styles of hardwood, bamboo, and more from 49 cents. And get 18 months special financing. The look and style of hardwood is on sale now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Welcome back to What's Trending Today on CRN Digital Talk Radio. I'm Jennifer Horn. Frank Morano joining me today in for Brian Whitman. And, uh, Frank, I know you're going to love this story because you oh. love to tease me about my golden blonde hair. <laughs> which, which is very attractive. It is. It's uh, not so sorry. bad. I, you know, it could use a little trim these days. I've been a little busy. But blondes are in the news. I mentioned that Kim Kardashian just dyed her hair blonde. Her sister, Chloe also dyed her hair blonde. Jared Leto... Also dyeing his hair blonde. Everybody's going blonde. I don't know if it's because things are finally warming up. We're getting out of that deep freeze. Spring is just around the corner. But a new survey is out talking about the big question. Do blondes have more fun? Now, Frank, as a man about town, uh, have you dated all sorts of hair colors? I'm trying to think. Um, I, I, you know, I, I've been a little short on the blonde front. I don't know. Maybe maybe blondes just aren't into me. I, I've definitely – yes, I have dated all sorts of hair colors, including a couple of blondes. Yes. Did you get a redhead? Uh, did I ever have – I'm trying to think. I, I, not that I can recall. Oh, no. see? I've, oh, now, as a blonde, I always thought I would love to have red hair. That's a, You know, it's kind of like when you have brown eyes, you want blue, or blue eyes, you want green. I mean, it's just no, – you always want what you don't have, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But oh, – In kindergarten, uh, Heather Lapkin was a, a redhead, or second grade. Uh, she, was, she, she used to like me in second grade, but I never pursued it, uh, so I'll never know what I missed out upon. Oh, man. You, you, come on. That would have been a big second grade romance. Yeah, please. yeah, exactly. Well – the talk of PS3. Yeah, twenty-seven percent of single blonde women think about sex several times a week. That's in comparison to only twenty-four percent of brown-haired women and twenty-two percent of black-haired women. So here's the tip: 
You probably don't want to date those black haired women, single guys. Come on. They're not thinking about, you know, the good stuff as much. Well, uh, first of all, how, who conducted this study? <laughs> how, how do we know that it's You know true? what's funny is I don't even know that I wrote down who conducted this study. Yeah, I, I have a feeling it's, you know, some blonde magazine or something. <laughs> this is there is a, no blonde magazine, Frank. That would be separatist. And, and we're yeah, not like that. <laughs> your people, you're very people. Uh, accepting we're people. We're accepting. But, and does this include both natural bron- blondes and dyed There blondes? are very few natural blondes. Just FYI, for the record, I hate to ruin any illusions out there, but... But most people, when they get into their 20s and 30s, they are no longer naturally blonde. Although I do have a couple of friends who are natural. I almost want to conduct the experiment on myself and see if I just let all my highlights grow out what would be there. I'm pretty sure it would be dishwater, which is why we haven't done the experiment yet. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I, yeah, but, I, I find this whole study sus- suspect. Yeah, it, it's a little. Uh, it, it's a but little. But honestly, crazy. though, tell me though, do, uh, do you find do you find as a blonde? Yes. and I'm sure you have friends that are non blondes. I do. At least four uh, of no, them. I only date. I no, I only have friends that are blonde. Sorry. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you find that you have more fun than they do? Yes. Well, I just find that I, as a person, have more fun than most people do. <laughs> Because I create my own fun. Hmm. I don't know about the kind of fun you're talking about because that makes me sound terrible. But I would say that I like to, I mean, come on. You just, life is not made to be serious. And I think the idea behind this survey is that blondes tend to have like a lighter, sunnier outlook on things as opposed to the gothic black haired woman. But, you know, I don't know. Now they're saying that single blonde women are more likely than other hair colored ladies to have a one night stand. 60% of blondes have had a one night stand. I'm ashamed of you, fellow blondes. Blondes, that's crazy. And that is, the next highest number is 58%, I told you, of red-haired women. They're the crazy oh, ones, Frank. You wow. should have done that. Then you've got 51% of brown-haired followed by black, gray, white, and the others. I don't even know what the others are. There's so many different hair colors now. I mean, my gosh, blue, purple, green. I mean, give me a break. It's hard yeah, to even you, do this survey. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm so emotionally just moved by this <laughs> that I may not be able to continue. I've given you inspiration for your night out this oh, tonight. Oh, yeah, something. All right, so also in blonde news, go figure there was more than one story here. Barbie is a blonde. She's going high tech. Now, not only will your child now be able to dress up Barbie and talk to her, but the doll is now able to respond thanks to Wi-Fi and voice recognition technology. So this is going to be a new Barbie that can talk back to your kid. Well, your child pushes a button to chat. Barbie will listen through an embedded microphone, and then she sends the audio to a cloud-based server. This is so complicated. Operated by Mattel's technology partner, Toy Tech, and then records a speech, process it, and Barbie responds to the question or comment. She's going to have to say, um, for a while, right? Because that has <laughs> got to take a little bit. And uh, apparently par- privacy advocates and parents have said that this is another way that people are going to be able to eavesdrop on their kids and on their family conversations being recorded and story you know there was this big story we covered a few weeks ago on what's trending where people thought their smart tvs were spying on them now barbie's got in on the action you know i'm prepared to believe uh both of those things i i do think that uh i mean i don't know why mattel would want to be a party to you know this kind of spying but you know i uh, why, why do we need something like this were the kids unhappy with their existing barbies that didn't spy on them uh, so yeah i mean uh, so i, I, I don't loved think my there barbie. was I, a big necessity for this did you ever play barbies as a kid Never, not once. G.I. Joe? Um, did I have G.I. Joe? I had those little green plastic soldiers. Oh, those were cool, and they were cheap, too, so you could get a bunch of them. Those little green men, those I were I think fun. I had a couple of G.I. Joes as, as well. My yeah. G.I. Joe had a lot of fun with Barbie. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you are ridiculous. <laughs> Also, the Teddy Ruxpin. Now, that makes me think of the I original of talking toy. Yeah, yes. Teddy Ruxpin was awesome. He just talked to you, though, and you just kind of blabbered back at him, and he never knew. Yeah, it was a tape. It was, it was a, a tape. Conception. Yeah, you yeah. stuck it in his back. Which must have been comfortable for poor Teddy. <laughs> Kevin Bacon also in the news. He's actually signed a deal with the egg industry, Frank. Uh, the American Egg Board is doing new commercials featuring a woman cooking eggs at the stove and Kevin Bacon lying suggestively behind her. As she's cooking the eggs, she goes up and smells them and says, I love the smell of bacon. Oh, my goodness. That's creative. Uh, I like it. It is creative. I like yeah, it. I, I love eggs. So uh, whatever helps the egg industry, I'm all for it. Eggs and Kevin Bacon. I love it. <laughs> they probably have to separate the eggs seven times, right? Six. 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 Oh, six on. degrees. Sorry. Sorry. Wrong you number. Came dangerously close to a good joke, Jennifer. <laughs> dangerously close. Well, I don't Let's not let it happen record. again. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to ruin my record. All right. We come back. We're wrapping things up. Krispy Kreme and Will Ferrell in the news. It's what's trending today on CRN Digital Talk Radio.
Come to Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante in Fullerton, California for our sizzling party savings. Book your wedding event or reception, your birthday bash, or a special event of any kind and celebrate at Angelo's and Vinci's. Come to Angelo's and Vinci's and celebrate in one of our many festive banquet rooms. It's an incredible fun event you'll never forget. Food, music, and lots of fun. Call for the details and don't forget our daily lunch and dinners, plus our Sunday champagne brunch, just $14.95. Minestrone soup, sausage and peppers, pastas, chicken dishes, salads, scones and muffins, plus so much more. A chocolate fondue fountain, Zeppelin's, cannolis, fresh fruit, champagne, and Junior will be waiting to make the omelet of your choice from our omelet bar. Angelo's and Vinci's has been voted on the Orange County Hot List as one of the top five Italian restaurants for the past six years. And don't forget our award-winning pizzas. Thin or thick, they're yummy. It's all at Angelo's and Vinci's Restaurante at 550 North Harbor Boulevard in Fullerton, California. Call 714-879-4022. 714-879-4022. Have you ever considered adding a home security system but thought it would be too expensive? Here's the good news. There's never been a more affordable time to help protect your home, valuables, and your loved ones. You can now get a $100 Visa card from Protect Your Home, your authorized ADT dealer, with the installation of a new ADT monitored system. Here's even better news. Your new system, worth $850, is free. You pay just a $99 installation charge and purchase monthly monitoring for less than $2 a day. Call Protect Your Home today at 1-866-669-8954. That's 1-866-669-8954. Get the peace of mind that comes with owning an ADT monitored system plus a $100 Visa card from Protect Your Home. Call now, 1-866-669-8954. That's 1-866-669-8954. 36-month monitoring contract required. General terms and conditions apply. Visit protectyourhome.com forward slash terms. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. Hi, this is Fred Dreyer. Join me and Michael Horn on the PM Show Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern here on CRN Digital Talk. We talk about things in the sports world nobody else does. So listen in to me and Mike at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on CRN Digital Talk. And go to crntalk.com for more information on other showtimes. And don't forget to take us with you by downloading the CRN app on the App Store. be singing this song all day long. I love it. Okay, welcome back. What's trending today on CRN Digital Talk Radio? I'm Jennifer Horn, Frank Morano in for Brian Whitman. And Brian, during the break, you know, we live tweet Frank, this. I'm actually Frank. What did yeah. I say? Brian. Did I just call you that? Yeah, we're both very charming, very I meant uh, to say Brian's out. Frank is in. Did I really individual? just call you Brian? It's okay. It's all right. I'm not offended. I like Brian. I, I, I take no At offense. least we were just in the studio. <laughs> kidding <laughs> you are ridiculous <laughs> hey we live tweet this and this is why i had brian on the brain actually we live tweet this show and at aaron s just tweeted me and said teddy ruxman's uncomfortable tape in the back accounts for the creepy eye blink clicking hashtag creepiest 80s toys i think we need to play this game because there are a few creepy 80s toys out there that we can play with. <laughs> well, um you know i don't rem- what else was there that was creepy uh, oh gosh, there was uh, play doh. Uh, There's nothing creepy about play doh. There was play doh. Oh, there were these little babies that I used to get. These little dolls where you could dissolve the diaper to see if it was a girl or a boy. Do you remember what? those? They were no. called magic nursery babies. Wow, those were a little creepy. And then one of my Barbies was a Western Barbie, and she had blue eyeshadow. I think that's where I learned my makeup techniques. And uh, she had this blue eyeshadow with a big eyelash, and you'd press a button on her back, and she'd blink at you. That one was kind of creepy too. And you. You know, I don't know. There's a couple of them that it, we'll have to think about this. There are a few mm. out there that kind of threw me for a loop. I don't, yeah, well, you know. You know, it is what it is. It I, is. I I, uh, I think certainly most of the children that were alive in the 80s weren't irreparably psychologically damaged <laughs> by Teddy Ruxman. because of the toys. Yes, <laughs> you never know. We uh, surveys have not come out yet. All right, Will Farrell in the news. He was trending this week big time because he went to spring training, which. 
by the way, Frank, I'm going there next week. I'm going to be ah. doing a little spring training myself. In Arizona? In Arizona. Oh, going nice. to see the awesome. Dodgers play. That'll be fun. And uh, on Thursday of this week, he barnstormed Major League Baseball spring training. He suited up for 10 different teams at five Arizona ballparks. He played every position on the field and even some off. He was a, a base coach, I think third base coach in one of the games. It's all part of an upcoming HBO special that's going to raise funds for several cancer fighting charities. I think it's a great idea. It was a lot of fun to watch. And uh, of course, it gave a little tip of the cap to Campy Campanaris. I mean, he played nine positions during a game in 1965. So I think that was the the 50th anniversary of this. And that's what we're celebrating. So Will Ferrell did it. And, you know, it was fun to watch. I saw him actually uh, on the field for the Dodgers. He came out and pitched. He had a 0-0-0 ERA. Pretty good. <laughs> and uh, Mets know, could use him. Yeah, um, Mets could absolutely use him. I'm a huge him. Will Ferrell fan. I thought it was, was great that he it did it. And he seems really gracious afterwards. This is what he said after he accomplished that. I'd like to thank you. Thank you all for today. Thank you. Thanks for coming out to spring training here in Arizona. Sounded pretty beat, though. Jeff. Oh, my, he must have been exhausted. I mean, he really, he played a full half inning for, I think, two teams. He did a few little uh, run-ins. He pitched to, just to one batter for the Dodgers. He took one uh, one inning of bat, you know, batting. So he wouldn't play complete innings, but he's got to be sore. I mean, the guy's 47 years old. Come on. Yeah, I, I'm a huge Will Ferrell I love fan. Him. I think it's great. Hopefully, uh, you know, this this results in a lot of money for cancer research and uh, a great HBO special. Now, before well. we get out of here, speaking of ballparks, did you hear? about what the Wilmington Blue Rocks are doing there, the single A affiliate for the uh, Kansas City Royals. Somehow I missed that one. They are, they've gotten together with Krispy Kreme and they've created a bacon hot oh. dog donut. This was all over Facebook, this picture. It's a like a long donut that they've cut in half to make a hot dog bun. A bacon hot dog jo- donut. Jennifer, th- this is ridiculous. And it this has the most disgusting thing I've ever it. had. Years from now, <laughs> when they choose the moment where Western civilization went off the rails <laughs> and they said, oh, it's no longer worth saving, this is it. The you bacon think? hot dog donut. Give me a break. Oh, come on. You know this you want rid- a, one never, little bite. You're going to have a bite. Never. I've never come heard of anything on. so disgusting. That's what it's I'm ridiculous. buying you for lunch. One little bite. Come oh, on. Oh, please. I want... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, Oh, uh, Thanks so fun. much. Frank Morano. Ch- follow him on Twitter, twitter.com, at Frank Morano, M-O-R-A-N-O. You'll want to catch up his podcast. Listen to his show this weekend on AM 970, The Answer. And Brian Whitman will be back with us next week. It's What's Trending Today. Catch our website, crntalk.com. For Frank Morano, Brian Whitman, I'm Jennifer Horn. Wishing you a great one, everybody. Are you tired of hearing your favorite talk radio show sound like this? What if you could hear your favorite shows in crystal clear, high-definition digital sound? Well, with CRN Digital Talk Radio's six channels of high-definition radio, you can now hear all of your favorite hosts like you've never heard them before in CRN HD. The difference is amazing. Catch your favorite political hosts like Dennis Prager, Tom Hartman, Barry Farber, and so many more. Entertainment and lifestyle programs.